What's going on everyone, Michael here. Today in this video, we will be going over the problem stock price fluctuation. This is an extremely popular problem asked at Google and it's also asked at Amazon, Atlassian and Bloomberg. Before we get started, I wanna let you know about my technical interview prep platform, Algos with Michael. So if you're preparing for coding interviews, I highly recommend you check it out. This platform is different from other coding prep websites because I actually teach you the patterns to solve various categories of interview problems. I teach patterns like sliding window, top K element, binary search related patterns, and I have a bunch more on the way that are gonna be added to the platform. Specifically for my YouTube audience, you guys get a discount using the code ALGOHELP. Now onto the problem. So the description says you are given a stream of records about a particular stock. Each record contains a timestamp and the corresponding price of the stock at that timestamp. Unfortunately, due to the volatile nature of the stock market, the records do not come in order. Even worse, some records may be incorrect. Another record with the same timestamp may appear later in the stream correcting the price of the previous wrong record. Design an algorithm that updates the price of the stock at a particular timestamp, correcting the price for many previous records at the timestamp, finds the latest price of the stock based on the current records. The latest price is the price at the latest timestamp recorded. And then we also have to find the minimum and maximum stock price based on the current records. And so these requirements are going to be implemented using the stock price class in a bunch of different methods. So this problem is a design problem. We need to implement these methods, which will be part of the class stock price. So let's go over an example just so we understand what needs to be done. Let's say we are going to track the stock prices for Apple. Update is called with a timestamp of one that has a price of 10. And then update is called again where at timestamp two, it has a price of five. So if we were to get the maximum so far, that would be 10 because that's the maximum price, which was at timestamp one. And then if we were to call minimum, that would be five because that's the minimum price, which is at timestamp two. If we call update again with three and seven, that would mean that timestamp three has a price of seven. And then if we called current, that would return seven. And that is because timestamp three is the most recent timestamp for this stock, which corresponds to the price of seven. And then we call update with a timestamp of one with price two. Now, this is one of the hard parts about this problem. We have another update that we need to make, but it's for timestamp one, which we've already done before. The problem states that records can come in any order and some records may be incorrect. So we need to override timestamp one's price. So now timestamp one corresponds to the price two. Now calling maximum again, it's no longer 10, it's actually seven, which was tracked at timestamp three. So that's a full example as to how our stock price class should function, but how do we know what data structures or algorithms to use? The way I like to tackle design problems is I think about the details on a per requirement basis and I do it in the order of most importance. Doing this breaks down the problem and allows you to focus on one thing at a time. So the most important requirement here is being able to update the price of a stock at a specific point in time. This means that timestamps will be mapped to prices and there should only be one price per timestamp. It wouldn't make sense if the stock price at timestamp one was $5 and $10. That's not possible. Based on this fact, a hash map would work perfectly here where the key is the timestamp and the value is the price. Moving on to the function current, this should return the latest stock price. A hash map has no inherent ordering, so we don't know what the most recent timestamp is. So what we can do to handle this requirement is have an integer called cur timestamp, which tracks the maximum timestamp that we add into our hash map. Then whenever we call the function current, we can just look up the price by the timestamp. That handles that requirement. Now we need to implement maximum and minimum. Once again, our map is not ordered. So the only way to find out the max and min stock price with our current data structure is to loop over all the pairs. That's linear in time complexity. So surely we could do better than that. Just as a general tip, Whenever you need to keep track of max and min values that actively change like they do for this problem, 
you should immediately be thinking of a heap data structure. So for max and min, we can use a tree map to keep track of the prices that have been added in our hash map. Doing this will allow us to fetch the maximum and minimum values in log of n time instead of linear time, so it's much faster. All right, so we know what data structures and variables we need. Let's dive into a step-by-step -step example. First, we call update with a timestamp of one and a price of 10. So we're gonna update our hash map with that pair. And then we're also going to add the price 10 with a count of one into our tree map. So for our tree map data structure, the key is going to be the price and the value will be the number of records that have that price. Because we could have several timestamps, right? that have the same price. So we wanna make sure we track all of that information. And then our current timestamp is going to get updated to one since that's the most recent timestamp. Next, we're gonna call update with a timestamp two and a price of five. So we're gonna add the pair two five to our hash map. And then we're also gonna add the price five with a count of one to our tree map. And notice that the pair five one is being added to the very front of our tree map because it's ordered by the keys. This is how we're gonna be able to implement our minimum and maximum functions very efficiently. And then our current timestamp is gonna get updated to two. Then if we were to call maximum, all we have to do is get the last key in our tree map and that would be our maximum, so 10. And then if we called minimum, we would look at the very beginning of our tree map, so that would be five. If we called update with a timestamp of three and a price of five, we're gonna update our hash map with the pair three, five. And then notice now that there's now multiple timestamps with a price of five. So instead of adding an entirely new pair into our tree map, all we have to do is increase the count for that price of five. So it updates to five, two. And then our current timestamp gets updated to three. If we were to call current, this should return five. And the reason why is because our current timestamp is three. So all we have to do is look up that record in our hash map by that timestamp and that corresponds to the price five. Then we call update with a timestamp of one and a price of two. So we're essentially overriding the original timestamp one's price. So it, we're just changing it from 10 to two. And then likewise, our tree map data has to change as well. So since the 10 price is being updated, we have to remove the pair 10 one from our tree map and then add the new price two with a count of one. And notice that the two one pair is in the beginning since it's ordered by the keys. And our current timestamp doesn't change because the timestamp that we're updating is one and that is not greater than our current timestamp. Then we call maximum. We just get the last pair in our tree map. So that would be the key five. If we call minimum, that would be two since that's the start of our tree map. Then we call update again with timestamp three and a price of four. So once again, we're overriding the timestamp three value. And so it gets updated with a price of four. And so what we need to do is first decrease the count associated with price five, since that's what's being overwritten. So it gets changed to five one. And then we have a new price that's being updated of four. So we add the pair four one into our tree map. And then our current timestamp doesn't change. And then if we were to call current again, all we have to do is fetch the current timestamp in our hash map that corresponds to the price four. All right, so let's go over the code for this solution. So let's initialize all of the different data structures and variables that we're gonna need. We're gonna need a hash map, right? And it's going to map uh, timestamps to prices, right? So it's just an integer to integer, and we can call this records. And then we're also going to need a tree map and it's also just gonna be integer to integer. And we can just call this prices. 
And then finally, we're going to need an integer variable, cur timestamp, which can just start at zero. And then in our constructor, we can just initialize our different data structures. So we're going to have our tree map equals new tree map. And now let's implement our update function. So the first thing we want to handle is if the timestamp already exists in our hash map. That means we need to update the price. So we'll say if records.contains key of timestamp, we're going to need to update the, the record in our map and our tree map. So let's first get what the previous price is from our hash map. So we could say records.get timestamp. And so this is, this is now going to be the overridden price, right? So we need to update our tree map to ensure that we decrease the count for this price first. So we can just say prices dot put prev price, and then we can just call prices dot get prev price minus one, right? We're just decreasing the count for that old price. And then if that price, if that previous price is equal to zero, then we can just remove the pair entirely. We don't need it in our tree map anymore. So we can just say prices dot remove prev price, right? All right, that handles that logic. Once we exit from this conditional, we need to actually add the new record and update the new price. So we could just say records dot put timestamp and price, pretty simple. And then prices, we're gonna put the price with an updated count. So we could say prices dot get or default the price going to default to zero, and then we're just going to increase that count by one. And then the last thing we need to do is update our current timestamp. But we only want to update it if the timestamp is greater than what our current timestamp already is. So we could say if our timestamp is strictly greater than cur timestamp, then cur timestamp equals timestamp. And that's our update function. So let's go over to current. To implement current, all we have to do is fetch the price from our records hash map, right? So we could just say return records.get cur timestamp. And then for maximum, we just need to get the last key in our tree map. So we could say return prices.last key. And then likewise for the minimum, return prices dot first key. And that's it. So let's make sure the solution works first. So our time complexity for the update function is going to be log of n because of the insertion required in our tree map. Our current function is going to run in big O of one time, constant time, because we're just fetching a uh, value from our hash map. And then as for maximum and minimum, both of those will take log of n time, where n is the number of records. The space complexity overall is going to be big O of n, where n is the number of records and prices that we have to add into our data structures. So we can add n elements into our hash map and also n elements in our tree map and summing them up, we get big O of two times N, and then we just drop the constant. So it's linear space complexity. And that's how you solve the problem, stock price fluctuation. I hope this was helpful for you guys. This is a really popular problem asked at Google and a bunch of other tech companies. So definitely important to be comfortable doing these design kind of problems. Like and subscribe if you want more content like this. I plan on doing a lot more Leak code related content to help you guys out. And then also check out my personal algorithm prep website, Algos with Michael. I teach you the patterns to a bunch of different categories of interview problems. So 
you're not stuck memorizing a bunch of leak code problems. You're actually learning patterns and, and applying them. It's, it's a much easier way to study. So definitely check that out. If you're interested, you can get a discount on the platform using the code algo help. And with that, I'll catch you guys later.